Greetings and welcome. We are in junior English, and our project now is to continue with our conversation with the great American poet Walt Whitman. I'm with you on page 432 of your hymnals, and we are now going to turn to really one of Whitman's more controversial poems, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer. Now, a lot has been written about Whitman as iconoclast, and I'm going to go ahead and begin there. I've already mentioned this idea, I just want to come back to it. Whitman is iconoclastic, that is to say, he is always challenging the status quo. In this text, we're going to hear Whitman's attack on school or on education. I would write this down at level 1 right now or at level 2A. Whitman has real problems often with the way schools are run. Now there's a reason for this um, for Whitman. He himself, before he became the famous poet that he became, publishing Leaves of Grass, first volume, 1855. I would write that down, 1855. Before, however, he became that poet, he was a teacher, among other things. He actually spent some time in the New York School District teaching. The stories, I believe I've already translated one for you. Uh, one of the stories, famous stories, is that Whitman had two boys who got in a fight in the schoolyard, and Whitman was asked to paddle the boys with a paddle. This was, this was the way you did discipline back in the day. You, you would go into the principal's office, and the principal had a large paddle and would hit the students on the posterior, and Whitman was instructed that he needed to do this. Uh, and Whitman asked, let me get this straight, I am paddling the students because the students were hitting on each other? And the, instru and the administrator said, yes, that's right. And Whitman said, let me ask you one more time. You want me to hit on students because they were hitting on each other. This seems counterintuitive to me. Uh, Whitman didn't last long in a public school system. Let's just say that out loud. Another story, however, that kind of shares a lot of the, uh, of the focus of his educational or pedagogic approach, as we will call it, uh, a, group of, a group of board members, school board members, came out to visit his school, and they found Whitman and his students lying in the grass uh, studying... Uh, um, bugs and they, the, the kids were all muddy and the, and the, the school board asked well why are the kids all muddy oh we went looking for frogs earlier this morning we wanted to study frogs and one of the school board members said we just bought you brand new books where in the book there are all kinds of drawings of frogs why would you need to go and look at frogs out in the pond to which Whitman's response was why would I have the students look at a drawing to see what I can have them see in real life. Let's just point out right away, this is foundational to understanding what we will call Whitman's pedagogy. P-E-D-A-G-O-G-Y. I'll spell it again, you'll want to write it in your notes. Whitman's pedagogy. P-E-D-A-G-O-G-Y. We're working now at level 2A or at level 1, either, either place is fine. Pedagogy of or related to how you teach children. Of or relating to how you teach children. The instructional approach. Now there's two ways, Whitman said, you can learn stuff. One way is to be told about it. A second way is to experience it. Okay? I'll, do, I'll say this again. Two ways to teach a child or, or a student something. One way is to tell about it. A second way is to actually experience it. Now, of those two ways, Whitman will ask, which one works better? And I would write that question down right now as a setup question. Which one works better? Whitman will write a little short poem called When I Heard the Learned Astronomer that will in some ways show you which one of these two ways he thinks is the more provocative, the more useful. Let's read the poem together now, shall we? I'm on page 432. Whitman will say it this way. Read with me. Follow along word for word. It will improve your reading to go ahead and read with me. I'm on page 432. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were ranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams to add, divide, and measure them, when I, sitting, 
heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Now let's annotate, shall we, this poem. First of all, at level one, we can quickly get through the annotation process by pointing out that this poem has a two-part movement. Now, this poem doesn't have a lot of meaning to you unless you know the definition of the word astronomer. Jot down in your notes real quickly at level one, what is an astronomer? What does he or she do? Astronomer of or related to the study of the stars and the planets, the heavens. In other words, space. An astronomer's job is to study outer space, to look at planets and stars. Whitman went to hear a lecture by a famous astronomer. He walked into the classroom, he sat down, and the astronomer began to talk about the stars. But notice how the astronomer did it. Look at the poem. He says, the astronomer used proofs, figures, columns, charts, diagrams, calculations, mathematics, to add or to divide, measure. So right away in your notes at level one, let's go ahead and say it. Whitman is sitting, notice the next line, sitting listening to a teacher talk about the stars. The teacher is, notice the title, learned astronomer. In other words, the teacher is a really smart guy. This teacher has spent a long time studying the stars. He is an expert. Can we say it that way? He is an expert. We might want to write that down at level one. He is an expert. He's learned. And Whitman said, I went in and I sat down and I listened to this guy start talking to me about the stars. He clearly knew what he was saying. He had all kinds of mathematics, equations, he had charts, he had diagrams. And now notice, when I sitting heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room. In other words, all of the people who are a part of this experience for him are applauding the teacher. Whoa, you're so smart. You're saying some really mind-blowing things. But notice the next line, the second part of our poem. There's a shift. Do you see it? Line number five. How soon, unaccountable, I became tired and sick. Put it in your own words. We're working at level one. We're just summarizing what he says. He says, I went in, I sat down, I listened to this expert talk about the stars. The people were all applauding him. But I unaccountably became tired and sick. Write down what you think he means by this. Hearing about the stars makes him throw up? No. What would be our word today? What would you say if you were sitting uh -huh, in a classroom with a teacher talking on and on and all of a sudden you realize that you are getting really, what's your B word? Right. Boring. Whitman says, I sat and listened to this superstar teacher talk about the stars and his charts and his mathematics and all of that and I got kind of bored by it. Bored by it. Tired and sick. I've heard enough, he says. So what does he do? Second part of the poem. Look at the last four, uh, three lines. Till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Now before we exegete at level 2, A, Let's talk real quickly at level one, literally what he does. So, two-part poem. Part one, I went in, I sat down, I listened to this cat talk to me about the stars. He was remarkable. Everybody else was applauding him. He had all kinds of diagrams. He was really good at math. But I got kind of bored. And so I got up, 
and I look at it, look at the verb. It's an interesting verb. I glided out. Notice the next one. By myself. Notice the next one. Into the mystical moist night air. Interesting. So let's just put it in our notes at level one. Two part poem. Part one, he's sitting listening to a teacher talk about the stars. Part two, he leaves. He leaves. He gets up and he walks out of the classroom, something one or two of my students have often longed they could do as well. Just get up and leave. And notice he goes out, glides out, alone, into the, what's the M word? Did you read it? I hope you wrote it down at level one. Mystical, moist, night air. Mystical. Whoa, that's an interesting word. Some have argued that's the key to this poem. That one word, mystical. What do we even mean when we, when we use that word? I would write that word down at level one, and then we're going to ask at level 2A in themes messages, what does Whitman mean when he talks about the mystical, moist night air? At level one, it's a simple poem. A guy goes in, listens to a, to a teacher lecture, a really good teacher, lecture about stars. Everybody else likes the lecture. He gets kind of bored. He goes out, part two of the poem, and he walks at night alone, looking up at the stars. He actually looks at the stars. He doesn't have somebody tell him about the stars, but rather he looks at the stars. Now that's level one. Let's go to level 2A now. And again, we set you up by giving you that P word. What was that P word again? I hope you can circle it now. Pedagogy. Do you remember that word? Pedagogy. P-E-D-A-G-O-G-Y. Pedagogy. How to teach kids stuff. Like, for example, how to teach them about the stars. Whitman says there's two ways to be taught about the stars. One way is, have somebody tell you about the stars. Lecture it to you. Use diagrams and charts and mathematics and all of that. There is, however, a second way. What would you qualify the second way as? If the first way is a lecturing, the second way we're going to call experiential. To experience. Notice a couple of things about that. In the lecture hall, he's sitting. You got to sit so that you can, just like you guys, you're sitting now so that you can hear the information, right? Notice he gets up and he glides outside. Gliding is an interesting verb. It carries all different kinds of meanings. If I were, for example, to call one of you up here and say, would you please glide across the room? You would say, wow, that's interesting. Because I kind of know what the word glide means. A certain kind of movement that we would call almost rhythmic, right? Gliding out into the mystical moist night air where from time to time he says, I actually looked up and just looked at the stars in silence. Experiential learning says, don't tell me about it. Let me experience it for myself. Then I will enjoy the experience because I choose to have the experience. Level 2A, possible messages, themes. If you were to do that mathematics thing where you have greater than or lesser than sign, and on one side of the sign you put lecture, and on the other side of the sign you put experience, which one of the two would Whitman say is the stronger for him? Which one of the two does he say he found the most use for or benefit from? Clearly what? He says, lecturing about the stars for me did nothing more than make me tired and bored. But experiencing the stars, that was magical. Now, let's look at that word magical for a moment at level 2A. Whitman, if you've been following my lectures at all on these different poems by Whitman, Whitman loves to talk about nature. He experiences nature. But he uses the word magical here to describe what? Write down in your notes, what, you, what do you think he means when he talks about looking up at the stars and it's magical? Well, one student said it this way. When you're studying about the stars in a book, it's kind of dead. When you go out for a walk in the middle of the night and look at the stars, 
That's an alive experience, magical, bringing it to real life. Now at level 2B, we should point out really quickly that this is a poem where Whitman says something by saying something. I'll say it again. Whitman's approach here, poetically, he says something by saying something. In other words, this poem is kind of a metaphor, an argument even, for what he's wanting to say good learning is all about. It's not that he's going to argue that lecturing is bad. The people applauding in the hall tells you that some people can learn through lecture style, being told stuff. But there's a second way to learn things that for Whitman seems to make more sense. Ball players always understand what we're talking about. So for example, if you're a ball player, you're asked, I'm going to teach you how to throw a curve. There's two ways to do that. One is to give the ball player handouts. Here, read about the curve ball. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And a coach will often have to lecture a ball player to say, I need you to go through this process of A to B to C. But let's be real. The only way you're ever going to be able to throw a curveball well is to throw a curveball. You have to have the actual experience. School for Whitman is one part lecture, but there's another part that's way more important for him in this poem, and it is to take the walk, to actually look up at the stars. Do you think it's at all possible that people could learn about stuff they never actually experience? How would history class be different for you if instead of reading about Greece, you got on a plane and traveled with your colleagues and spent a month traveling Athens? How would that be a different experience for you? How would it be a different experience to read, for example, about Brazil in your history book, or get on a plane and fly to Rio de Janeiro and stay for a month? Walk the streets. Go out into the outer environs. Learn the history through experiencing the history. Let's talk real quickly now at level 3A. Obviously, we can try to relate any number of texts to this kind of thing. Let me just ask a couple of questions to help set you up. What is your favorite movie or TV show about teaching and or a teacher? In an earlier lecture, for example, I mentioned that famous Robin Williams film, Dead Poets Society, a, a movie about a good teacher. Do you have a favorite film or movie about a good teacher that comes to mind? Or, you might say, a bad teacher. What is your favorite film about the stars? Do you have a film that, for example, is set in space? Or do you have a video game that you like to play that is set in space? The stars. Let's ask this question about texts, other texts. What is for you the text that you've experienced that made you want to learn more about a topic? Did you ever read a book, for example, about a certain kind of experience and then want to have it? Did you ever see a movie about some place and then want to visit there? In other words, is there a relationship in your history at all between looking or hearing about something and actually experiencing that something? Finally, let's work at level 3B. What is for you, your view, on Whitman's pedagogy? When you think about your own life and learning, do you find that you learn better when people tell you about it or when you experience it? Whitman would argue the problem with school is that there's too much talking by the person in front and not enough experiencing by the people out there. Do you agree with that view? It's a kind of radical view. In an earlier lecture, I asked this question, how would it have been different this morning if for you school was getting up at 4 in the morning out on a ranch where you worked for five hours on your chores doing all kinds of activities, many of which you've never done before, and so you have to be taught how to do it. And then you break for a few moments to talk, for example, about a Whitman poem, and then go back to more work. Do you feel like you would learn better in an experiential kind of school, where, for example, you have to go through a process of experiencing things? I once pointed out 
it would be interesting to have a school where you played video games all day. But instead of just playing the video games, you learned how to create the video games. From the very ground level, you'd have to learn the mathematics. You'd have to learn the technologies. In other words, you wouldn't just play the video game, you would learn the video game. Does that make sense? What kind of an experience would that be for you? How would that be different for you? Within our sport academies, we've been trying this idea out for quite some time. Where, for example, whatever sport it is, baseball, soccer, volleyball, whatever, you live at the school, it's a boarding school, when you are not studying in your traditional subjects, you're playing the game. You actually are experiencing the sport itself, and there's kind of a combination of the two. Finally, last question at 3B, what is your view of school and learning? Has your view of school and learning been a positive one or a negative one? Do you think you could change your view of schooling to accommodate? Notice Whitman, he gets up on his own accord, no more sitting for him. He is a person of action, and he says, I learn best when I'm doing, not when I'm sitting. Do you think you could change, maybe in some ways, your attitude about learning in school to accommodate? Whitman says, learning can be magical. Do you think it could be, again, for you, the idea of school and learning? Thank you.